have a look at a network diagram, uh, and I'll show you the exact difference uh, between them. Uh, if you remember, a NAT instance was used to route traffic to our EC2 instances uh, that are in our private subnet, and that's internet traffic. So it's giving these instances internet traffic. They are able to connect out through to the internet, um, but people uh, within the internet couldn't use like SSH or RDP uh, to connect via a NAT into uh, our instances to basically administer our servers. If you wanted to do that, what you would typically do is have what's called a bastion host, or in Australia we call them jump boxes. And that basically allows you to SSH or RDP into your bastion and then initiate a private connection over the private network um, to your instances to administer them using SSH or RDP. Uh, so basically bastions are used um, just for administration uh, only. Uh, and the idea is, is that instead of having to um, you know, harden a fleet of EC2 instances uh, for security uh, purposes, you can just have one hardened bastion uh, and then you access all your instances in a private subnet through that hardened bastion. So this is the one that you would um, you know, really beef up. You'd probably lock down um, your SSH and RDP ports to your specific IP addresses, for example. Uh, and then that way only you can connect to the bastion and administer it. Uh, and then you do that over a private network connection. Uh, so hopefully that all makes sense uh, to you guys. Um, NAT instances are very much on their way out. We are starting to use NAT gateways now, um, but NAT instances uh, still come up in the exam. A NAT instance will always be behind a security group, whereas a NAT gateway will uh, is you know uh, not behind a security group, is uh, security group independent. And of course with NAT uh, gateways is Amazon do all the security patches for the instance and they also make it highly available. Now you probably are gonna get a lot of different scenario questions around how to make a Bastion instance highly available. Uh, with any kind of high availability, obviously you're going to want uh, multiple subnets. One subnet always equals one availability zone. Um, so you're always gonna want at least two public subnets. You could have a Bastion uh, in each public subnet uh, and you could do things like auto scaling groups so that if you um, you know you have a minimum of one bastion uh, and then that way if that uh, bastion host goes down um, the auto scaling group will deploy it into a either a, a one availability zone or the other uh, and then you could have route 53 running um, health checks on that bastion server uh, so that's how you build out a highly resilient uh, bastion network with NAT instances you do something similar uh, but you'd have to have some kind of script to automatically fail over your NATs. Uh, but with NAT gateways, uh, which I don't have on this diagram, Amazon handle that failover for you uh, automatically. So in terms of my exam tips, it's pretty easy. Just remember the differences between a NAT instance and a Bastion instance. A NAT instance is used to provide internet traffic to EC2 instances in private subnets, so they can go and you know install uh, MySQL or Apache, for example. Whereas a Bastion instance is used to securely administer the EC2 instances using SSH or RDP in private subnets. And in Australia, we call them jump boxes. And the reason I tell you we call them jump boxes is because it actually makes a lot of sense. You basically jump onto that uh, server uh, and then once you're in there you can SSH or RDP from that server into your private subnets. So that's it guys, uh, if you have any questions please let me know, if not feel free to move on to the next lecture, thank you.